All right, guys, looking at area again today, um, looking at different types of shapes now, looking at rhombuses, looking at kites, and looking at trapezoids. So what I want you to do, um, start off on your paper, sketching the diagonals for these two shapes. And of course, you can tell that's a kite. If you remember your definition for a kite, this is a kite. And this one is actually a parallelogram, but it's actually a rhombus, which means all these sides are equal. So in both of these cases, I want you to sketch the diagonals. Now on mine, I'm just going to pause for a second. I'm not going to extend this whole thing. I'm just going to draw half of that diagonal. And by the end of this, we're going to come up with formulas for a rhombus and for a kite. So that's sort of the, the goal here. It's going to be the same formula for both of these, same area formula for both of these shapes. And it comes from breaking these shapes into triangles. So you could ignore the formula I give you and just find the area of this triangle plus this one plus this one plus this one and say the area of the whole thing is just the sum of those four triangles. You could also say it's the sum of maybe this triangle plus this bottom one. Same thing over here, the top one plus the bottom one. There's different ways to break this shape up into triangles. Um, but I want to use the fact that, as you notice, the diagonals of a rhombus as well as the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. They meet at right angles. So I'm going to add some labels here so we can come up with this formula. The thing that's going to be unusual about this formula, it's going to be in terms of the diagonals. So I want you to label one of the diagonals D1. In this case, I chose the longer one to be D1. This is not all of diagonal 2. This is only half of D2, so I'm going to call that 1 half D2, 1 half of diagonal 2. So the area of this top yellow triangle, if you remember back to area of triangles, is just 1 half base times height. You don't need to write this down. Um, that's the area of any triangle. I want to write this in terms of the diagonals. So the base is actually D2. If you were to turn this triangle a little bit sideways, D1 is actually base. The height is actually D2. Or sorry, half of D2. So this is the area of the yellow portion of the rhombus. It's probably pretty obvious. I've just drawn the diagonal here, so I've cut this thing in half. I have another shape, another triangle that looks exactly like that. The bottom one is also one half base times height, you know, base being diagonal 1. This is just flipped upside down times the height. This would be another half of diagonal 2. So this right here is the formula for the area of a rhombus. Now, it's not cleaned up, so we're going to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to simplify these fractions, uh, multiply all this and simplify it. Half of a half, of course, is a fourth. And over here, a half of a half is a fourth. Then I'm adding these because I want to find the sum of the entire rhombus. Well, a fourth plus a fourth is a half. So that right there is the formula for the area of any rhombus. And it's not in terms of base and height. It's in terms of the two diagonals. And that formula also works for a kite. And why does it work for both of them? Well, it goes back to the diagonals. Because the diagonals are perpendicular and they're made up of these right triangles, either of these formulas works. Now, if you knew the side lengths, you certainly could call a rhombus a type of parallelogram and use base times height from 9.1a. But this is in terms of the diagonals. If you're given the diagonals, this is a much more efficient way to find the area of a rhombus or find the area of a kite.